Motorworks, welcome back to another teardown video. We had a failure come in and we are going to show you exactly what happened and what we were looking for to diagnose what the issue was. Stay tuned. A little explanation of services. So Tom got our pocket port package. That's a 2J-3 package. So that includes the pocket port valve job bronze guides, valve job lash mill assemble. Uh, and then we did one of our parts packages um, and it comes with a Faria valve and the GSC 5066 spring kit. This is good up to 1200 horsepower. Tom's gonna make about 800 horsepower. So this is a perfect combination. We put it with a GSC S1 camshaft and I mean, it's just a killer combo that's ran many, many cars up to a thousand horsepower. So Tom had an issue where he thought that he had a lash issue and he kept hearing a noise coming from the cylinder head. Couldn't figure it out. He was checking lash. Lash was somewhat loose, but not too crazy. And he, we sent him out buckets. It didn't help. So he went and started driving the truck around and he just couldn't get the noise to get away. He pulled the motor out, he went through the engine, put the head back on it, and it still was there, that same noise was still there. And then he got frustrated, hit us up, sent the head in. So what happened? I can tell you right now that we saw a lot of oil starvation. Now when I say oil starvation, it could also mean contamination. So the cams showed obvious signs that there was no oil, there was a lot of contamination because there was a lot of transfer of metal. On the tip of the valve, you can see that there was a lot of pulling and there was, the only way that this could possibly happen is if there is no viscosity in the oil. On the buckets we see pretty much what you always see in all of these failures uh, online is the bucket really got tore up now this thing has like six hours of runtime and all the buckets got tore up. Everybody pays attention to the top of the bucket. It's the first thing that they see, but in reality, I mean, this is telling you something, but uh, the side of this bucket really shows how there is some transfer of metal to metal contact. And that is be only because there was no viscosity in the oil. The oil is contaminated and uh, we could really see how this could mess up all this, mess up the camshafts. I don't care what material you have, nothing is gonna survive not having oil for very long. We had some bent valves and a bent valve is definitely gonna cause some issues. Tom did not check piston to valve clearance. And uh, what we think what happened was when he put it together, uh, he did not put the pistons down far enough and he tagged a couple of valves and these things were open during assembly and they kind of tagged each other. There was marks in the pistons and now um, he was trying to also compensate for that. And this was actually the noise he was listening to. So valves, when they bend, they'll make a ticking noise and you might think that Oh, that's probably the bucket or, you know, you got something else going on. You're checking lash, but lash is actually a good thing to look for because lash is going to open up usually if the valve is bent enough. Um, the lash kind of actually stayed on point with this for some weird reason. Uh, maybe Tom's a lucky guy. I don't know, but that's what happened here. And uh, we found the noise. So we at least solved one of the issues. So part of the problem was that he used a assembly lube that was very oily and it wasn't gonna stay on to the camshaft. No matter what he did, it was just gonna do that. He, Tom also uh, responded that he would take the coils off and he would just crank the motor over until it got oil pressure. Well, when he did that, that's where the problems started because he took off the coils, but he, did not do anything about the injector. So now the injector was spraying fuel, in, raw fuel inside of the engine, and he just cranking it and cranking it and cranking it. And now the oil is getting contaminated with E85. And as we can see, and I'll show you more, that's where the problem started. Looking at the bucket holes, uh, we haven't been able to explain why they look 
almost sanded. Uh, I can only surmise that that would have something to do with how the there was no viscosity, but you can see the rub marks on the corners. And uh, although they're not really an issue, um, it just didn't look right, but this head's completely reusable. It just needs some love. So we're gonna polish up the buckets and we polish up the bucket holes, make them look right. So I know I'm going a little out of order here, but the first thing that I noticed about Tom's head was that the combustion chamber, although it was oily, it also had like a very light color to it, almost clean, but had oil kind of mixed in it. And that's when we, we, we figured out that that has to be fuel. There's no other way it's anything else because also the intake port was completely clean. When you start your car and it runs right, the intake port's not gonna be completely clean. And his exhaust ports were full of soot. So you could tell that it was still burning and it was still going through the exhaust port and the exhaust port was really black. And it, although it wasn't wet, it was very black. We could tell that there was a lot of mixing of fuels and oils and not running correctly. Another issue we see sometimes, uh, I hear people complain, oh man, I got, you guys never did my guides because uh, the, the valve gets stuck. Well, you can see this valve here, it had a lot of striations. Um, we can only think that maybe it has something to do with the oil or a lot of times if you have a valve float situation, the lock will pull up on this and you see these marks here. I don't know if you can see that, it's very tight, but they'll make marks into the lock area. The locks will like beat into the lock area and then it mushrooms this whole, and then you cannot pull the valve out without sanding this whole area here. Um, so it might feel like that maybe the guide's tight, but there's no way it would run like that. It's really this area here that you would have to make smaller or make it to size again so you can pull it through. Uh, the head looks decent besides the parts. We sent the camshafts out to GSC. They're gonna polish them up. So in conclusion, Tom felt like this was a good video. It's a learning experience for himself. He's a novice. He's not used to putting this stuff together. He learned a lot and he wanted other people to see it. This is how he learns as well. Uh, the, the failure, if you look at them very closely, if you look at all the ones you see online or on Facebook, um, on Instagram, they all kind of look the same and i've been preaching that it's an oil issue and i think that this failure really shows exactly what i'm talking about and when the viscosity goes away whether it be from valve flow or the oil is contaminated with e85 or what have you it's going to create a failure it, they're all going to look the same it's going to look like there's no oil in it all together and it's not the camshaft material because it will do it no matter what tune in next time Thanks for watching.